Almighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords, the Ancient of Days, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. My Lord and my Savior, in the lives of every one of your children, let this day be a day to be remembered. In this particular branch of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, let this day mark the beginning of miracles. From now on, anyone who will ever come here to worship, let them live with a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let someone shout hallelujah. Okay, shake hands with one or two people and say, good morning, God bless you. And then you may please be seated. Let me start by saying, you have an incredible choir. They are very good. Very, very good. Well done, well done. God bless you. You may be seated. But then, because I'm your daddy, therefore I'm your coach, and I want you to get better. I have one little correction. It's not for the choir per se, but for the uh, instrumentalists. The organists are super. <laughs> but they get carried away. And many times, the instruments are so loud, it drowns out the voices. Yesterday on the field, I was going to say that, but um, I said, when we get here this morning, we will discuss where nobody will hear us except ourselves. <laughs> I mean, they, they were incredible. I mean, you see the way they play the organ super but so loud you have to listen hard to hear the voices now the voices were created before instruments that's why the instruments are called background music background. They're supposed to be there to accompany the singing. When the organist is starting, it can be as loud as he wants. But the moment it is the turn of the choir, he goes to the background. I hope my boys will take note of that. <laughs> In other words, what I am saying and I'm 100% being honest. You are very good. <laughs> but you must control your emotion. All musicians are emotional people. I know because I happen to be one of them. And you have to tell your spirit 
when you are dealing with music and instrument that the spirit of man is subject to man you have to learn when to go loud and when to go soft it's like driving young people think that the best driver is somebody who can zoom uh -uh. you know when to zoom you know when to slow down I, I hope you get the point uh -huh. because I'm going to be asking your pastor now to let me have your ministration on Sundays you are good and you will get better alright so if the introduction is that long it means the sermon is going to be short <laughs> Mark chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 22 to 25 Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25 and he come to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him he asked him if he saw aught and he looked up and said I see men as trees walking after that he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly there are three categories of blindness three categories of darkness if you want to put it in that way because we are here to light up Shokoto the first type of blindness is someone who is born blind someone who is born blind has never seen light all this life long everything is darkness so if you ask him how many colors are there he will say only one and that color will be black if this were to be at night and all lights are gone all the colors you see green, blue, white, everything will become black. Whenever you find someone who is born blind and he comes in contact with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will give him light. Why? John chapter 9 from verse 1 to 7. John 9, 1 to 7. There was a man who was born blind. Jesus saw him. The disciples were asking questions here and there. Uh, who sinned that this man was born blind is himself or the parents? Jesus Christ said, No. It's like this so that the glory of God can be shown. God knows that there's nothing good about darkness at all. He knows that when he created the heaven and the earth, in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 1 from verse 1 to 3, everything that even God himself created was without form and empty. As long as darkness was there nothing beautiful came from even what God did until he said let there be light so if there's anyone here or you have a relative who is born blind I decree today that the one who says he will be glorified by 
and the eyes being opened, all these blind eyes will be opened. Yeah. If there's another case of a, a man who is born blind, like in Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, talking about bad males, God will show mercy because Bartimaeus cried for mercy. And when God hears someone say, God be merciful unto me, whatever else he's doing, he will stop to attend to that person. So if you feel that you are, you have been in darkness of any type, physical, mental, spiritual, as you call on God today, he will show you mercy. But there is a blindness that is worse than that of the fellow who was born blind. It is the blindness of somebody who used to see and then became blind. Like in the text I read to you, Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25. Mark 8, 22 to 25. They brought a blind man to Jesus. He took him outside the city and then spit on his eyes, touched his eyes and asked him, can you see? The man said, I can see men walking like trees. What does that tell you? He used to see men. He used to see trees. But he lost his sight. He used to know the difference between green and blue and uh, white, but now everything was black. It is better never to have been saved than to become a backslider. Because the one who is a backslider has already tasted the Lord. He has seen the light. He has enjoyed the benefits of salvation. Now when he backslides and the joy of salvation is taken away, that fellow is worse than someone who had never been born again. Because he had seen light, but now he has lost his sight. That's why I'm praying this morning. Every one of you who might have been backslidden. This day, God will restore you. Yeah. To show you that to have been able to see before and then become blind, how terrible that situation is, the Lord God Almighty himself was prepared to touch this man two times. To make sure he can see perfectly again. If you are backsliding, the Lord is willing to touch you a second time. Amen. To restore you to the joy of salvation. Amen. But the worst part, the worst kind of blindness is to have been able to see and become blind permanently. To become blind as a result of God himself saying, I switch off the light. Oh, is there an, exa an example like that? Judges chapter 16. You can read the story from verse 1 to 21. Judges 16. From verse 1 to 21. It's, it's the story you know very well. The story of Samson. He was a mighty man of God. He has tasted the power of God. Even from the womb. The moment he was born, the spirit of God began to move him mightily 
Lion roared at him one day, he tore it into two. On one occasion, they bound him, hands and feet, brought him to the enemies. While the enemies were rejoicing, the power of God came, and he just broke everything, grabbed the jawbone of an ass, and killed a thousand of them. The rest fled. The enemies knew this man, if we are ever, ever going to permanently overcome him, we must pluck out his eyes. So the moment they got him, the first thing they did was they removed his eyes. And he died a blind man. And if you want to know the agony of something, the agony of somebody who used to be able to see, but now became blind because God departed from him. When he was crying again, you can read that Judges 16 now from verse 22 to the end. When he cried to God for a second opportunity, he said, I want to avenge me of my eyes. He knew that what he has lost was a very, very precious thing. Oh, I pray for you, my children. Today, this morning, it's not a crusade. Crusade is out on the field. Today, is something more than a crusade. Something that will last you forever. A crusade is like somebody feeding you. You are hungry. And somebody came and he supplied you plenty of fish to eat. This money is not feeding you with fish. This money is teaching you how to fish. So that for the rest of your life you won't lack. You are my own. There is a saying in the, the town where I come from. They say every Jesha man is the son of Owa. Owa is the traditional ruler in the Jesha land. But when night falls, Owa knows how many children come to his house to sleep. And to everybody on the feed yesterday, I am Daddy Gio. But you are my own. I can't leave you with ordinary fish. I must teach you how to fish. I can't just come and say, Lord, give these people light. I have a duty to teach you never to lose your light. How come Samson lost his light permanently? Because the Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 1, Proverbs 29 verse 1, it says the one who is often reproved, who hardens his neck, will perish suddenly without repentance. You must never, never backslide. Do I hear you say amen? amen? Because for the rest of your life, for the rest of my life, each time I hear concerning the church in Sokoto, I want it to be good news. Amen. I want you to be able to see for the rest of your life. It's a horrible thing to have been able to see before and then lose your sight as a result of God withdrawing. God withdrew from Samson. That's why the enemy was able to grab him, to grab him and throw him into darkness and darkness that was perpetual. I will tell you a story and then we will pray. I told you the sermon won't be long. And this kind of sermon must not be long so that we'll be able to remember every detail. There was a young man. Some of us know him. His name was 
brother Sam. He was practically an illiterate. But he was full of the Holy Spirit. I mean, this boy was full of the Holy Spirit. At least, he raised three people from the dead. That's how powerful he was. They invited him to come and preach at a teacher training college. And he says, when I get there, I will tell them, I can't speak English, so you must get me an interpreter. But as he opened his mouth to say, I can't speak English, English began to flow. He preached in English, beautiful English, for one hour. He didn't know a word of what he was saying. Only that after one hour, people were rushing forward, weeping, to give their life to Jesus Christ. He led them to salvation, prayed for them, ministered to them. As soon as he finished ministry, he couldn't speak English again. That's how powerful he was. I could tell you several other things he did. He gathered up the idols of the mother, who the mother was a leader among the occults in the, in the place. Had so many idols in the house. When this boy gave his life to Jesus Christ, he gathered everything that belongs to the devil in the house and burnt them. When the mother returned and saw what his son had done, he said, ah, this boy must die. And the mother went to, the, to their coven, told them what the son had done, and told the people, I'm sorry I can't kill him because I'm the mother. Help me kill him. And mama stayed away, stayed all night in the coven so that the people can do what they wanted them to do before she would return. Brother Sam was about to sleep. He was kneeling down to pray. He has locked the doors and windows because he know mama may not return till tomorrow morning. When on off a sudden, a huge dog, huge dog, passed through the door that was locked, covered all over with child, and was coming towards Brother Sam. Brother Sam looked up and said, in the name of Jesus. And something like a thunderbolt came from heaven and struck the dog dead. When the mother returned in the morning, he saw Brother Sam roasting the dog. That was Brother Sam. Then pride came. Brother Sam, let's go for Bible study. Who is going to teach? Brother so and so. Uh, how many people are he raised from the dead? Brother Sam died in an asylum. Mental asylum. Because at this stage, God said bye-bye. It's better never to have seen the light than to see it and then backslide and refuse to return to the Lord. I want your life to last forever. Yeah. That's why I'm begging you this morning. Those of you who have never tasted the light, you have been pre pretending that you are born again, but you know yourself you are not. <laughs> you know in church, you sing, you dance, you clap. As soon as you leave, you go back to a life of sin. Hey, come now. Come and give your life to Jesus Christ. Or you know beyond all that that you have been born again. You know, you know that you were once born again. But you know. But you know that you are backsliding. That all those things you say you will never do again, you are back to doing them. Hey, come to the Lord now. There's still an opportunity for you to repent. Because tomorrow might be too late.
You never can tell when God will say goodbye. Up to now, he hasn't said goodbye to you. So if you are just wanting to give your life to Jesus, you come to the altar now, and they say there are many altars outside there. You go to the altar now, and we will pray together for your salvation. If you are backsliding, and you want God to restore you, come to the altar. Let this day be your day. Come. I'm going to count from one to five. If by the time I say five, you are not already standing by the altar, either for salvation or for restoration. I will know you are not coming, and then I will pray, and we'll be on our way. So I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. It's not a question of what we, my friends, say. You don't want your light to go out. If you are not yet born again, come now. If you are backsliding, come now. The Lord is calling you. Three. Four. That's the final countdown. If you want to come, you better come now. Thank you, Father. Now, those of you who are at the altar, and those of you who are on the way, cry to God. If it is salvation you want, cry to him. Lord, give me genuine salvation. The kind of salvation that will say bye-bye to a life of sin. Cry to him for that. If you are a backslider and you want to return home, say, Lord, I'm sorry I backslid. I'm coming back to you now. Please, Lord, don't let me ever backslide again. I want to be restored to the family of God. And the rest of us, let's pray for these people. Let's intercede for them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Pray that God will have mercy on them. Intercede for them. The Lord, save my soul, Lord. Have mercy on me. Forgive all my sins. I want to be your, your child. I want to live as a true child of God. Almighty God, you are the one who can restore me. Restore me, Lord. Cry to him for restoration too. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. Oh, thank you for your word. Thank you for these precious people that have come forward to surrender their life to you and those who backslid who are willing to, restore, to be restored to you. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, Lord, let your blood speak for this, your children. Let your blood wipe away their sins. Amen. Save their souls, Lord, and write their names in the book of life. Amen. And all those who are backsliding, who say, we are coming back to you, please receive them. Amen. Restore them. Amen. And don't let them ever backslide again. Amen. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, I rejoice with those of you who have come forward. The pastors will be attending to you in a moment because I would really love to be praying for you. They will take your names, your address, your prayer request, and I promise I'll be praying for you. But I want you to stay where you are and join the rest of us in the prayer we're about to pray. The rest of us, let's stand on our feet and shout a big hallelujah. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and cry to Him from the bottom of your heart and say, Father, Father you gave me, me light. Whatever I will do, that will cause you to take away the light. 
Father, don't let me ever do it. Don't let me ever do it. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. You gave me light. Please, Lord, don't let me lose this light. Whatever I will do that will cause you to take away the light from me, don't let me ever do it, Lord. Let's go ahead and pray. Whatsoever I will do that will make you reject me, Father, don't let me do it. 